Well, folks, fall has arrived in Montana. It is starting to get into the 40s and 50s at night, and we need a little bit better way to heat the house. We don't have a wood stove yet. We're waiting on that to arrive, and then I will get that installed. In the meantime, we've just been using diesel heaters. I'd like to put in a little bit larger diesel heater, so that is the plan for today is building a solar powered diesel heater we use primarily solar power here at big sky off-grid to generate all of our power and that is the primary reason we are wanting to build this solar powered diesel heater we don't have you know the ability to run a generator all the time and we don't want to it's pretty hard on generators to run those during the winter and as much as we can minimize that as possible we're going to so if we can solar charge the battery for the diesel heater and just use dc to charge it and dc to output to the diesel heater i think that would be pretty handy we'd save a lot of efficiency not going dc to ac back to dc so save us a little bit of power and be a fun little experiment so this video is sponsored by rododio they will be providing the battery Let's go ahead and get started building this and I'll talk a little bit more about the battery later. Okay, so we're in our bathroom. This is our temporary furnace, which is uh, basically a diesel heater. The exhaust goes outside and an, an air intake is also outside. So it circulates outside air for combustion and it circulates inside air for heat. So there is no uh, vapor release like you'd normally have with propane. You can end up with high humidity inside of a building. Um, and you also don't have any harmful fumes, assuming it is exhausted properly. And if you have a window over there, you might run into an issue with that. So things to keep in mind, uh, we saw this done on a chicken coop in Alaska. And I was like, you know, it's worth a shot. So, um, it works. There's a lot of improvements to be made with this. One improvement for the exhaust, if you're going to have one of these like inside a, a wall where it's um, insulated, you need to have a double wall or triple wall pipe to go through that and safely exhaust this. This is a window cavity, so I was able to just cut a hole in it and put the exhaust on the other side. And I've looked at it a lot, monitored it, never had any issues, but I would still suggest uh, metal or something non-combustible to be attaching this to. This is all temporary, will be removed, and window will be here, so that's why it's this way. But if you're putting this in a vehicle, you should have, like, metal to attach it to so that it's not just attached to something combustible. We are going to set the charge controller up here, set the battery on the floor, get everything wired together. I've also got some breakers and some uh, shutoff switches that I'm going to try to wire in. We'll see how that goes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get those solar panels connected in just a moment. Right now, I'm gonna go grab the battery and get that hooked up. We charged everything earlier, so we were sitting at like 13.4, 13.5 volts, which is pretty darn good. Yeah, this is reading 100% charged. So let's go ahead and hook up the diesel heater and then we'll be ready to test it.
So I was trying to take the leads from the diesel heater and directly attach them to the charge controller because there is a load option on that. Didn't work, so I'm going to directly attach it to the battery. Okay, so we got the Rododio 12 volt 100 amp battery. We do have a uh, fuse on the diesel heater connection. Diesel heater, charge controller. This is a fuse for the solar charge controller so it doesn't have any more than 40 amps come through there. And now our diesel heater is actually powered. And it is turning on. All right, we're gonna let that warm up and we'll check back in with it in just a couple minutes. Well, I went and took a shower. The diesel heater's been running for about an hour so far. It is chugging along just fine. It's already warmed it up a degree or two in the house. So uh, the battery is handling it quite well. I haven't heard it sound this good in quite some time. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, this is great setup. Uh, and I haven't even put a dent on the voltage yet. It's like 13.3. So uh, I'm going to take a look at the app and see what that has to say but overall this is working quite well um, i'm really looking forward to getting some sun on the panels and uh, seeing what that does tomorrow so we stayed nice and toasty last night with the diesel heater running it didn't even put a dent on the battery it's still reading like 13.3 13.4 so uh no real change there it ran for 12 hours straight with no issues whatsoever um super happy with this battery this is so much better performance than what we were getting out of the power stations so much more capacity and now i can solar charge it very easily uh i'm gonna go ahead and get the panel hooked up to this and let's see how much sun we can bring in Rododio's fall prime day sale will kick off october 7th and run until october 13th all the batteries will have a big discount Check them out at RododioPower.com. Rododio makes batteries for all sorts of purposes, off-grid living, in a camper, overlanding, four-wheeling, job site power, off-grid cabins, marine application, trolling motors. If y'all are in the market for a battery that can do all of these things, definitely go to Rododio Power and check them out. We were pretty happy when Rododio reached out and asked if we would like to test out any of their batteries. This is one of their 12 volt, 100 amp smart lithium batteries with a Bluetooth battery management system built in so you can connect to your phone and monitor the status of this battery, see discharge, charging voltage, um, see what temperature it's at and know if it's gonna be able to take a charge or if you need to warm it up or not. Um, very handy features built into this battery. We have a number of diesel heaters. Our smaller ones work off of portable power stations, but our larger ones do not. And we've not been able to properly test them out. And that's why I was pretty happy when Rododio reached out and asked if we'd like to test out any of their products. I figured this would work great with our diesel heater. We'll be able to run one or two diesel heaters off of this unit and solar charge that on its own. This 12 volt, 100 amp battery has approximately 1300 watts worth of capacity. That's gonna be quite handy. That could easily run our diesel heater for at least a day, maybe a day and a half. So just for testing, we're gonna use these solar panels here. It's a little cloudy today, so we'll see how they do. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get these run wire around the house and get them hooked up to the charge controller next to the diesel heater. And that should work. Okay, so these are the wires that are going to the diesel heater. This is the wire that is coming from the solar panel that is sitting on the front of the house. We are going to go ahead and uh, cap this line and connect that. That solar panel is fairly portable, so I may need to move that around. I'm going to leave this line pretty long so I can move it around as much as I want. Um, and I may get uh, a larger solar panel attached to it, but honestly, I think that's going to be plenty. All right, so we're reading positive 40 volts. So we know the red wire is positive and the black wire is negative. 
Always good to verify before you plug something in. Okay, so I verified this is the negative side for the charge controller on the diesel heater. That should work. So I need to feed this into there. I like to use a screwdriver to just press on the back of these to make sure it slips in all the way. Okay, so that's the waterproofing connection. Make sure that's set right and then screw this down. And now it's waterproof. All right, positive side's connected. Let's connect the negative side. Well, I messed that up. I'm gonna go get the right tool. So we've been testing this out over the last couple of days and everything has worked fantastic. I've not had to charge the battery at all. It's been charging through the solar panels. Uh, solar panel is working great. I've honestly gotten over 200 watts of power from the solar panel going to the charge controller and charging the battery. So that has worked very well too. Um, the battery typically sits above 13 volts. Right now it's at 13.6. We're bringing in 35 volts from the solar panel and over three amps so a decent amount for what we need on this setup um, we've seen this diesel heater pull uh maybe a max of like 100 watts on startup but most of the time it's about 40 50 watts when just the fan is blowing um so we should be able to easily get 24 hours worth of heat off of this and hopefully in that amount of time it will be charging through the solar panels and we'll not have to charge it any other way uh, we'll let you know how, how this performs this winter. We will use this on our warmer days and uh, when we need supplementary heat and the wood stove isn't quite cutting it at like negative 30, negative 40. But overall, we've been super pleased with the setup as well as the Rododio battery. If y'all are in the market for any batteries, chargers, inverters, inverter chargers, head over to RododioPower.com and use our code BIGSKY for additional 5% off. Thanks again, Rododio, for sponsoring this video.